speaker. But first of all, I would like, uh, we would like to say thank you for accepting our invitation to talk to our today's uh, webinar. Uh, he will be sharing and discussing some some of the articles under RA 9266, which are very relevant to our professions. He is an architect, graduated at the Consolation College in Mahodan City, studied at Philippine Law School. He also worked before in uh, like in abroad, like Malaysia and Dubai, uh, where he was employed as an architect coordinator. Currently, his firm is engaged in the private practice on, in the field of architecture, specialized in different models of alternative dispute resolution, such as construction contracts and claims, management, commercial, arbitration, uh, mediation, and, construct, and construction arbitration. In year 2008, he published a book. Uh, the title is the Essential of Practice of Architecture. And also in year 2009, he also published another a book, uh, RA 9266, The Architecture Act of 2004, Question and Answers, with Notes and Cases. His motto is, uh, an architect should be, uh, should be done not only his uh, title. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us all welcome and please give a massive round of applause to our guest, architect, Maestro Alfredo Fernandez. Hello, sir, architect. Hi, Architect Fernandez. Nakamute ako, nakamute. Uh, Nakakohost na siya, ha? Ayan, okay. So, naka, nakamute ako kanina. No, <laughs> sorry. Hi, okay. sir. Uh, welcome, sir. Okay, so, thank you for the uh, invitation. No? Meron pang, uh, meron pa namang natira. No? Nandyan pa naman sila, hindi pa naman sila umaalis. Okay? So, may uh, topic is... Uh, uh, RA 9266 in legal methods and uh, this uh, topic is uh, only a sort of review no dahil uh, lahat naman siguro ng attendees is uh, architects okay meron bang uh, reviewee or all attendees are architects uh, sir, we have uh, UAPSA and UAPGA. Okay, we have UAPSA and UAPGA. Okay, sige. Uh, much better dahil uh, dadaan natin, natin yung mga part na may uh, relevance doon sa uh, mga UAPSA and uh, UAPGA. No? So, thank you for this invitation and uh, I will start uh, sharing my uh, screen. No? Uh, kung nabigyan na ako ng uh, uh, privilege to share. Yes, sir. You're under co-host. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, first of all, uh, these are my uh, YouTube channel and these are my book. No, uh, My book is uh, available at... Uh, any central bookstore nationwide. So, sa SM Mega Mall, meron tayo sa 5th floor, sa Quezon Avenue, uh, sa Recto, sa may Evergutesco, meron sa Cebu, meron sa Davao. Okay? So, ang latest book is sa uh, RA9266 uh, Q&A, no? uh, with notes and cases. Pag sinabing with notes and cases, meron siya mga citations uh, decided by the court. Okay? So, 
uh, you can use it no for uh, reference no and uh, well sa YouTube channel ko marami na tayong nai-upload na mga uh, lectures no in uh, professional practice in uh, construction management and uh, diretso pa okay so today is uh, the uh, webinar for uh, UAP Singapore but uh, I believe uh, marami ring mga ibang chapters no na nandito ngayon sa ating uh, virtual classroom no marami ako nakikitang taga Legazpi no? meron ako nakikitang uh, I think may Aklan pa no and uh, Quezon City okay so thank you at uh, kahit yung ibang chapters is uh, nagkaroon ng time to attend on this uh, discussion so to start uh, with, uh, I would like to uh, give you an idea and uh, a sort of review ng ating uh, RA 9266. Yung composition ng ating uh, Republic Act 9266 is composed of five articles and uh, we have uh, 47 uh, sections no, covering the whole topic of uh, this uh, architecture law. But later on, in my uh, continuing discussion, I will not discuss this in a manner na yung parang nag-review ka sa school or sa academic institutions na from Article 1 to Article 5, from Section 1 to Section uh, 47. Okay? So I will uh, just uh, select some topics no, and then we will link each other no, and uh, also to other laws, ililink natin. The way lawyers, the way uh, the legal profession uh, study no our uh, law no kasi napakaimportanteng bagay na dapat na iintindihan natin kung paano natin itatahi-tahi doon sa ibang uh, laws ang ating architecture law no? and uh, we are not only reading it uh, by way of uh, memorizing from article 1 to article 5 from section 1 to section 7 so article 1 speaks of general provisions article 2 uh, speaks of professional uh, regulatory board of architecture Article 3, examination, registration, and licensure. Article 4, it uh, focuses on the practice of uh, architecture. And uh, we have the uh, final uh, provisions. So, example, general provisions, hindi ko na yan uh, discuss ang mga uh, definition of terms. Okay? Uh, that is uh, understandable. Ibig sabihin, uh, hindi dahil hindi ko diniscuss ay hindi siya importante. So, kung hindi ko yan diniscuss, dahil ibig sabihin, siya ay uh, self-explanatory. Uh, Okay. So, I will just uh, touching topic which is critical to the practice of uh, every architect. No? The, the, the need to know by our uh, students, by our graduate of architecture, and uh, even the public. So, yun yung pagiging uh, sequence ng ating uh, discussion uh, tonight. Okay? So, our law uh, was passed in uh, 2004, signed by uh, the president, the, the past president, uh, Joseph uh, Ejercito. Uh, Estrada. Okay? So, sinasabi nila na ipasa na nga noong 2004, wala namang pangil yung RA 9266. No? Uh, little by little in our discussion, makikita natin kung paano natin nilalagyan ng pangil ang ating uh, batas. Kasi ako'y uh, naniniwala na may pangil ang batas. Okay? Uh, nakikita natin walang pangil ang batas dahil tayo mismo mga arkitekto ay hindi naglalagay ng pangil sa ating batas. No? Uh, we usually uh, wanted to uh, wait no na mayroong uh, magte-take action and then uh, magbe-benefit na lang tayo but uh, all of us hindi tayo gumagalaw na paano natin tulungan na magkakaroon ng uh, pangil ang ating uh, batas so i disagree with that opinion na sinasabi nilang walang pangil ang ating uh, Republic Act uh, 9266 so mayroong pangil ito and uh, ang makakapaglagay ng uh, bangis ng pangil ng ating RA-9266 is tayo mismo mga arkitekto at no other. Okay? So, before we go on with the, the discussion on RA-9266, I want you to uh, learn muna kung ano ba ang meron sa RA-545 and what are those uh, things no, na nagkaroon ng amendments. No? Kasi kadal karamihan siguro baka mamaya uh, ilang percent lang ang umabot sa RA 545 and the uh, majority ng attendees uh, ang naabutan is Republic Act 9266 and uh, usually in the uh, academic institutions 
hindi na binabalikan ng mga professors ang uh, history on what are those uh, included in uh, Republic Act 545 and what are those now in our RA 9266. So, I selected some uh, provisions sa RA 545 na medyo kapareho niya doon sa uh, Republic Act 9266 as a sort of uh, comparison. So, ano yung makikita doon? In Article 59 of uh, Republic Act 545, in uh, the definition of terms and uh, additional qualification of applicants, no? in Article 59, uh, it speaks about our practice in RA 545. And in RA 545, it includes in our practice the uh, architectural and structural designing. Kaya kung makikita natin yung mga arkitekto na nabilong pa sa RA 545, no, uh, regulated pa ng Republic Act 545 during the time that uh, they took the uh, board examination, they are allowed to prepare sign and seal uh, architectural at the same time structural drawings structural design analysis and other structural uh, documents dahil malinaw sa ating uh, batas Republic Act 545 noon that it is part and the scope of practice ng uh, architects ang preparation ng architectural and structural uh, designing where in fact in uh, RA 9266 pag binasa ninyo yung uh, Uh, Article 1, Section 3, makikita natin doon, ang nakalagay na lang is architectural designing and structural conceptualization. So, nawala sa atin ang uh, structural uh, design. Pinalitan ng structural conceptualization. Doon tayo ngayon na problema, no? Because uh, some CEs are preparing architectural uh, drawings, sign and sealing architectural drawings, pero na-prohibit ang mga architects in the preparation of the structural design dahil talagang wala ka na makikita sa ating uh, RA 9266 that speaks that we are allowed to prepare sign and sealed structural documents. So may mga naririnig nga ako nagsasabi na mas mabuti pa daw ibalik na lang dapat sa RA 545 dahil uh, kasama pa sa atin yung uh, structural designing. But you know, maraming nagpa-practice ng mga Uh, sole practitioners ng mga architects. I'm, I'm calling it sole practice no? because, uh, well, yung iba tinatawag nila as uh, we are single proprietorship. No? And uh, I disagree with that opinion dahil uh, we are not a proprietor of our uh, license. We are not a proprietor of our authority to practice. The proprietor of our license, the proprietor of our certificate of registration is the state. We are only given the benefit, we are only given the privilege to practice. Kaya nga, di ba, subject for revocation, subject for suspension, subject for uh, withdrawal, as long that there is a compliance with the due process of law uh, provided in the uh, 1987 uh, Constitution. So it is only a mere privilege. So the, the correct term, guys, dapat is uh, sole practitioner, no? not a sole proprietorship, because sole proprietorship is used only in businesses. No? And uh, as I am uh, telling uh, everyone, Architecture is not a business, but it is more on uh, service. No? Kaya nga dapat hindi tayo profit-oriented. Uh, okay? Although we are sort of a nature of a business. So hindi naman uh, mapagkaila na parang nagiging uh, business ang nagiging nature ng ating uh, practice. But uh, you know, the, the correct term din is that uh, we are more on service rather than uh, business-oriented. Okay? So in that practice, na wala sa atin yung uh, structural design. Okay? Ang natira sa atin is structural conceptualization. Kaya, in general, pag tinignan natin ang ating uh, architecture practice, we should be allowed only to prepare architectural documents. We are not even allowed to prepare uh, planning uh, plans. We are not even allowed to prepare electrical plans because we are encroaching with the practice of other professions. But uh, you can read in our uh, scope of practice of architectural layouting of mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and sanitary. So, ibig sabihin, we are only allowed in architectural layouting, but we are not allowed really to prepare architectural uh, documents that, uh, that to, encroach, to encroach 
with the other uh, disciplines. No? So, dapat nga, is tayo ay nakafocus na lang din sa preparation ng architectural documents. But, marami pa rin mga arkitekto na nagpa-practice ng daeds, no? na even yung uh, sole practitioners, nag-prepare nag, uh, ng complete set of uh, working drawings and let uh, master plumbers, electrical engineers, structural engineers sign and seal. No? So, dapat nga, hindi talaga dahil uh, distribution na dapat because hindi na part ng uh, practice natin under RA 9266 ang preparation ng uh, structural and uh, other allied uh, professionals. They are, they are our partners in the industry. Na. Pagka tinignan ninyo ang uh, revised implementing rules and regulations of PDT 96, although nagkaroon ng uh, pending case no, between uh, DPWH uh, secretary and uh, PICA while, while the uh, UAP is an intervenor, Diba nilay down doon sa National Building Code Revised Implementing Rules and Regulations that these are the documents to be prepared by the architects, these are the documents to be prepared by the civil and structural engineers, these are the documents to be prepared by other allied professions. Dahil, uh, ano nila yon Scope of practice nila and that is not our scope of practice. Okay? So, in, uh, in this sense, natanggal sa atin ang uh, structural design na ibigay sa civil engineer. No? Ang history behind is that nagkaroon ng memorandum of agreement before sa pag-amend uh, ng ating RA 9266 or before uh, the amendments of RA 545 into RA 9266 na talagang i-delineate na ang, uh, ang function between uh, architects and uh, civil engineers. No? Pero at some point, nung naipasa yung RA 9266, nagkaroon ng revised implementing rules and regulations ng PDT 96, nag-turn back yung uh, mga kaibigan nating uh, civil engineers. No? And uh, defile a case, uh, defile uh, a writ of uh, preliminary injunctions on the revised Im implementing rules and regulations of uh, PDT 96, specifically Section uh, 302. No? Kaya nga ngayon, di ba, nagkaka-problema tayo sa ating uh, practice because some civil engineers are still preparing Uh, architectural uh, documents because of that pending case. But you know, may uh, stand to that. No? Uh, hindi ko lang masyadong i-elaborate dahil baka masubjudisya ako ng Supreme Court. No? You know, may stand to that is uh, kahit pa halimbawa sasabihin na, na unconstitutional ang uh, revised implementing rules and regulations of uh, PDT 96 specifically uh, Section 302 no? Ang PDT-96 IRR is only a regulation and PDT-96 is a general law. No, It is a, a, a principle in a statutory construction that if there is a conflict between uh, general law and uh, special law, special law shall prevail and RA 9266 is a special law. No, So, di ba? Pag tininan mo pa rin, babalik pa rin tayo sa practice ng RA 9266. Bakit? Kasi wala namang injunction. Walang uh, TRO ang RN 9266. Ang may TRO noon, ang may writ of preliminary injunctions noon is the revised implementing rules on, and regulations of PDT 96, specifically Section 302. Walang injunction, walang TRO, walang pending case filed before RN 9266. So, kung ako, tinitinan ko dyan, is that uh, if there is a conflict between that special law And uh, general law, special law shall prevail. No? So, sana ma-resolve as early ng uh, Supreme Court, no? dahil ngayon pa lang sila gumalaw, for that eight years na nag-file ng uh, petition for certiorari, masyadong matagal uh, bago gumalaw ang uh, Supreme Court for that resolution. Okay? So, uh, that is one amendments from RA 545 na tinanggal ang uh, structural uh, drawings, structural documents, and pinalitan ng structural conceptualization. Okay? The next one is uh, on the issuance of certificate of registration. No? So, issuance of certificate of registration in RA 545, dumadaan pa sa Civil Service Commission, dumadaan pa sa Secretary of Public Works and Highways ang uh, recommendation before a professional uh, shall be issued a certificate of registration. Tinanggal na yon, no sa RA uh, 9266 no nawala yung uh, provision na yon and uh, ang nandiyan na lang is the PRC and uh, of course automatic naman ang Civil Service Commission and then uh, from that uh, point na under dapat ang PRC 
sa Office of the President ngayon is under sa Dole. Okay? So, what is other points na nandun sa RA 9266? Pag binasa ninyo ang uh, Section 24 ng RA 545 noon, ang makikita mo lang dyan, ang ini-issue lang dapat sa architect no, na nababanggit is the issuance of the Certificate of Registration. No? Pag binasa mo yung Section 25. Pag binasa mo yung Section 18 ng RA 9266, pareho yung concept nun on the issuance of Certificate of Registration. Pero, tingnan ninyo, may nadagdag dyan and professional identification card. No, dinagdag yung uh, professional identification card. Later on, i-discuss natin doon is the professional identification card a license or not. Okay? Kaya ko hina-highlight yan para makita natin ano ba yung mga uh, portions sa RA 545 nang nag-amend ang RA 9266 na nawala or uh, nagkaroon ng uh, addition sa RA 9266. Okay? So sa section 18, nadagdag ang professional identification card. Wala yan sa section 24 ng RA uh, 545. Okay? On the second paragraph of section 18 of RA 9266, nakalagay doon, a professional identification card bearing the registration number, date issuance, expiry date, duly signed by the chairperson of the commission shall likewise be issued to every registrant who has paid for the corresponding fee. Pag binasa ninyo yung, uh, yung provision na yan ng 9266, Parang lumalabas, mandatory ang uh, issuance ng uh, PRC ID. No, but later on, I want to show to you that the issuance of PRC ID is not mandatory. It is only optional to be issued to the uh, professionals. Okay? Next is, in uh, RA 545, sa registration ng architects required. Sa RA 545 kasi, bakit nabibigyan ang mga civil engineers to prepare Uh, sign and seal architectural documents before dahil malinaw yan sa section 12 ng RA 545 that except in the in this last case when he is a duly registered civil engineer or use the title architect doon pa lang sila pwedeng mag sign and seal no kasi nung uh, nag uh, simula naman yung history natin mas marami sa atin na mga civil engineers no kakaunti lang yung mga arkitekto nung uh, 1950s No, 1960s, 70s, kakaunti lang. So, ang uh, history beyond is that pag walang arkitekto sa lugar, saka pa lang dapat pwedeng mag-sign uh, and seal, saka pa lang pwedeng mag-prepare ng uh, architectural documents ang isang civil engineer. Kaya pag tinignan natin, pag binasa natin yung section 12 ng RA 545, malinaw dyan ang word na except in the last case. Ibig sabihin, sa huling pamamaraan na kung walang arkitekto sa lugar, binibigyan ng pahintulot ang mga civil engineers to prepare sign and seal architectural documents. Kaya ngayon, pag tinignan natin ang Section 25, wala na ang word na civil engineer. Tinanggal na ang word na civil engineer. Kaya nga hindi sila dapat pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture kasi malinaw naman na ang binigay na privilege, ang binigay na benefit sa kanila Nung uh, tayo ay nasa RA 545, Section 12, tinanggal na ang word na civil engineer. Walang-wala na talaga yon Kaya nga, hindi na talaga dapat sila pwedeng mag-prepare ng architectural documents dahil wala na silang privilege under RA 9266. Okay? And again, in uh, Section 25 of uh, RA 9266, sa issuance ng Certificate of Registration, dinagdag na naman uli ang issued a professional identification card. Okay? So, yun, yun yung mga palaging na-highlight dito. No? Yung pag-provide ng uh, professional identification uh, card na parang lumalabas na parang mandatory. No? But uh, later on, I will show you na bakit uh, hindi siya mandatory. Okay? And then, uh, we have also this uh, prohibitions in the practice of architecture. No? Ang nagbago lang sa prohibitions in the practice of architecture, nilinaw ang uh, nilagay na fine, no? yung penalty. No? Nilinaw sa RA 9266, Section 29, and wala yon sa Section 30 ng RA 545. And ini-emphasize pa rin yung pagdagdag ng word sa pag-issue ng Certificate of Registration slash Professional 
identification card. Okay? So, yun yung highlighted uh, provisions no, on the comparative analysis between RA545 and RA9266. The rest of the provisions of RA545 na wala doon sa provisions ng RA9266, deleted yun. Okay? Yung ibang portion na nandun sa, sa section na 34, section na 35, copycat yon doon sa RA545. Uh, okay? So, yun ang uh, comparative analysis. And now, we will uh, go with the, the provisions of RA9266. Uh, okay? So, we will start with the uh, introduction. Okay? Saan ba nang galing ang ating uh, batas? Okay? First of all, ang mga references no, or yung mga pinagkuhanan ng mga provisions is ito yon, okay? Number one, 1987 Constitution. Napaka-importante, no? Mamaya, makikita natin bakit 1987 Constitution. Saan sa 1987 Constitution, okay? And then we have uh, RA 8981, the PRC Modernization Act of 2000. Bakit? Ang nagre-regulate ng issuance ng ating certificate of registration, ang nagre-regulate ng ating uh, authority to practice is RA 8981, no? And not on RA 9266. And then uh, previously, RA 8981 is PD 223, no? Presidential Decree 223. Yun yung old PRC law. So, nagkaroon din ng amendments. Ito yung uh, PRC Modernization Act of 2000. But previously, it is PD-223. And then, we have our uh, RA-545, the Old Architecture Law. Kasi kung wala namang Old Architecture Law, walang uh, amendments ng uh, RA-9266, uh, walang repeal na mangyayari. And then, we have the Oath of Professions. Okay? Kasi, pagka hindi ka na pag-take ng oath, hindi ka professional, hindi ka arkitekto. No? Uh, pag tinignan natin yung mga pumasa ngayon noong January 2020, wala pa silang uh, oath-taking uh, ceremony. No? So, they are not yet allowed to practice uh, architecture. Then, we have the Architects' uh, Code of Ethics and uh, Ethical Conduct. And uh, we have also our uh, Architects' Credo. Then, we have uh, PRC Resolutions, the uh, PR BOA Resolutions, the Civil Code of the Philippines. Uh, that is one of the sources of the practice of architecture. Bakit? Liabilities. Saan makikita? Civil Code of the Philippines. Obligations and Contracts. Civil Code of the Philippines. Then we have the Revised Penal Code. Okay? One sources of the practice of architecture. Bakit? Saan nakikita yung penalties? Saan nakikita yung mga cases of uh, immorality? Uh, malpractices? Nasa Revised Penal Code. Then we have the Civil Service Rules. No? Uh, those who are employed in the uh, government uh, service. Then we have the local government code, no, di ba? We are governed by uh, the local government code sa pagkuha ng ating PTR, no? Or if you are working with the uh, local government. Then uh, we have the Corporation Code of the Philippines, no? Ng ngayon meron tayong uh, bagong Corporation Code of uh, 2019, no? Dadaan natin na mamaya. And then uh, the writing of scholars and authors, and we have the Supreme Court jurisprudence and other borrowed legislation. So those are the sources of the practice of architecture. Now, we'll start with the uh, Constitution. Ano ang pinaka-importante na provision sa Constitution that relates to the practice of our profession? Ito, yung uh, Section 14, Number 2 of Article 12 of the 1987 Constitution, which provides that the practice of all professions in the Philippines shall be limited only to Filipino citizens. Mayroon lang kulatilya. No? Ang sinabi doon sa uh, later portion ng batas, save in cases prescribed by law. Okay? Unless, sabi ng, uh, ng Constitution, unless mayroong batas na nagsasabi na pwede ang uh, citizens of the foreign country mag-practice ng uh, architecture sa Pilipinas. Example, yung uh, ASEAN ngayon. Okay? Uh, yung uh, APEC. Okay? And uh, reciprocity. Okay? So, covers yon sa save in cases provided by law ang uh, reciprocity agreement. So, later on, meron akong kasong uh, ikikwento regarding sa reciprocity uh, agreement. Okay? 
let's go now to the academic qualifications of the uh, applicant or the aspirants in the practice of uh, profession. Now, I will not discuss the uh, Article 1, no? the general provisions uh, that is only self-explanatory. No? I will just highlight some portions in every article. Okay? So, uh, let us uh, first discuss the academic qualification. The first academic qualification is that you must be a Filipino citizen or a citizen of a foreign country qualified to take the examination. So, citizen of a foreign country allowed to take the examination in what manner later on i-discuss ko yung isang kaso kung bakit allowed na, na mag-take ng examination ang citizen of a foreign country number two or letter b that you have good moral character so ano ba yung good moral character later on i-discuss din natin yan and then of course you comply with the uh, equivalent two years diversified Training. Take note of the wordings of the law. Ang sinasabi ng wordings of the law is that you must have equivalent of two years. Although, in our revised, uh, in our IRR, nakalagay doon yung uh, 3,840 hours. But uh, in my view, that is not specific only to 3,840 hours. Kasi ang sinasabi ng batas natin, at least equivalent to two years diversified training. But that diversified training should not be uh, close to that uh, two years. No? Kasi ang pang point dapat dyan is, in your two years of diversified training, pag nakikita mo no, sa mga aspirants natin, pag nakikita nila na two years na nga, pero hindi pa naman sila talagang uh, nafe-feel nila that they are not yet enough. No? Your experience nila is not yet enough for them no, to practice uh, architecture solely. No, after passing the licensure exam Dapat wag mo nang pilitin Na kumuha ng licensure examination But what happens right now is that Pagdating ng 2 years o 2 years na ako no, Mag-apply na ako for uh, the board exam But sometimes, hindi na cover Yung uh, lahat ng aspeto Ng uh, diversified uh, training no? So, yung isa requirements natin And then, of course That is counted for 2 years Unless meron kang master's degree and your master's degree is equivalent to one year diversified training, basic na basic ang uh, qualifications. And the last one is, you must not be convicted of any uh, criminal offense involving moral torpitude. Okay? Saan makikita yung moral torpitude? Nasa revised penal code, no? uh, deceit, no? yung istapa, that is uh, considered a, a crimes involving moral torpitude. No? Ngayon, Dito sa mga nababanggit, yung letter D na yan is, ang malinaw na sinasabi ng batas, convicted ka of any criminal offense involving moral turpitude. Ibig sabihin, kung tumatakbo pa yung kaso mo, and there is no yet uh, final decision from the court, allowed ka mag-take ng licensure examination. Pero pagka ikaw ay nagkaroon ng final judgment, and you are guilty, then you are not allowed already to take the examination because you are already convicted of the crimes involving moral turpitude. Nawawalan ka na ng isang qualification doon sa uh, academic qualification prescribed by law. Okay? So, in comparison to the qualifications of an aspirant and to the qualification of the member of the board, ang nawawalan na naman sa member of the board is that hindi pwedeng maging member of the board ang a citizen of a foreign country. Only a citizen and resident of the Philippines. Hindi rin pwedeng nakatira ka sa abroad. Kailangan, you are a citizen and a resident of the Philippines. Wala na dyan ang a citizen of a foreign uh, country. And then, of course, active practitioner and uh, nag-stop uh, ka ng uh, teaching no or uh, stop uh, reviewing for the last uh, five years no so hindi pwede yun yung qualifications doon sa member of the board na uh, critical uh, areas now we will go with the uh, case of uh, Yasuyoko Ota and uh, after that we will go with the diversified training okay these are the case of Yasuyoko Ota Si Yasuyoko Ota is a Japanese national. Yung kwento niya is a, is a Japanese national. Nagpunta ng Pilipinas, okay? And uh, tumira sa Pilipinas for a period of 10 years. 
nag-aral ng medisina sa Bicol Christian University. And then, nag-graduate sa Bicol Christian University. Nung mag-graduate, nag-apply for board examination. Ito yung lapses ng PRC. No? Nung mag-apply for the board examination, nag-grant. So ngayon, nung nag-grant, syempre, nag-exam, pumasa. Nung pumasa, si Yasuyuko Ota, nag-apply sa PRC for registration and to take an oath. Doon ngayon hinarang ng Professional Regulation Commission. Sinasabi ng uh, PRC, hindi ka pwede mag-register, uh, hindi ka pwedeng mag-take uh, ng oath because you are a foreign national. Walang reciprocity agreement ang Pilipinas sa government of Japan. Umakyat hanggang sa Supreme Court. Ano sabi ng Supreme Court? No? Ota can practice medicine in the Philippines. Nowhere in said statute doon sa law of medicine, nowhere in the city statute stated that the foreign applicant must show the conditions of practice of medicine in said country are practical and attainable by Filipinos. It is enough that the laws of a foreign country permit a Filipino to get a license and practice therein. Thus, Uh, since OTA has all the qualifications and does not possess any of the disqualifications, he can practice medicine in the Philippines. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court, as long na hindi na prohibit ang uh, Filipino to practice in Japan, that is considered as reciprocity. Hindi kailangan ng written document, hindi kailangan ng written agreement between government of Japan and government of the Republic of the Philippines sa tinatawag na reciprocity. As long na allowed ng Filipinos, that is considered as reciprocity. That is one classic example ng qualifications doon sa letter A, sa qualifications ng applicant for examination, that a citizen of a foreign country is qualified to take the examination in the Republic of the Philippines. Okay? Classic, uh, ano yan, classic uh, case, no? That was only decided in uh, July 14, 2008. No, medyo fresh pa, no, isang uh, dekada. Okay? So, yon that is an uh, example of reciprocity. Now, let's go with the apprenticeship. No, kasi, critical din ito sa mga arkitekto, critical din sa mga UAPGA, critical din sa mga students. Okay? In the time of uh, architect Cesar Cancela, as the chairman of the Board of Architecture, itong kagandahan na ginawa ni Cesar Cancela, no, Nung time na siya yung chairman of the board, mayroon siyang uh, resolution. No? And yung uh, resolution ni si Sir Cancela, na lahat ng arkitekto, kailangan mag-render ng mentorship. Okay? Mag-render ng mentorship required in a minimum of four months. Okay? Minimum of four months. Nawawala ngayon ang uh, provision na to sa bagong uh, resolution. No? Kaya pag nakikita natin, ang mga graduates natin, ang mga students natin paglabas ng uh, institution kung saan-saan na napapadbad. No? Hindi na sila na lalagyan ng uh, barrier na dapat sa architectural firm ka lang. No? Tinan mo ngayon kung saan-saan na pupunta. Developer. No? Uh, minsan yung iba is talagang nagpa-practice pa solely no? without a license. The rest is uh, working in uh, corporations. No? Later on, titignan natin kung pwede silang bumirma pag nasa korporasyon. No? So, ito ay nawawala ngayon sa panahon ito. Pero sa time ni Architect Cesar Cancela, sinasabi doon, every year, dapat mayroong mentorship ang isang arkitekto for a minimum of four months in every aspirants. A minimum of one aspirants. Okay? So, nawawala ito ngayon. Sana maibalik. No? Para masecure natin ang ating mga graduates na hindi pupunta doon sa mga illegal uh, practitioners no? kasi the rest no? ginagamit na ng mga civil engineers dahil uh, hindi naman kaya ng civil engineers totally mag-conceptualize no? so ginagamit yung mga graduates natin and mga students natin in their uh, benefit okay so uh, let's go now with the uh, apprenticeship so apprenticeship ang uh, pinaka-critical uh, issue dito is that uh, itong six phases cycle ay talaga bang nagagawa ng mga apprentice natin? 
No? So, as we all know, in our logbook of uh, diversified experience, mayroon tayong six uh, phases no, na scope of practice or field of practice. We have the uh, architectural designing, drafting, structural conceptualization, preparation of contract documents, technical economic uh, feasibility studies, uh, interior, architectural interiors, uh, field superintendents, project management, etc. So, yung lahat ba na six phases cycle na yan ay na ibibigay ng mentor sa isang apprentice. No? Kasi mayroon ako mga kakilala na two years as CAD operator pero na-certify ng mentor. No? Nakapag-take ng board exam, na-certify ng mentor na nakompleto ang six phases cycle. So what happened? No? So namawala tayo doon sa tamang direction. Ang sinasabi nga natin, hindi na implement ang RA 9266. Oh, This uh, diversified training is part of the provisions of RA 9266 as, qua as uh, qualification of an applicant for examination. So pag pinermahan natin at dinaya natin yung logbook, hindi eh, ba tayo rin yung mga arkitekto ang hindi mismo nag-implement na sarili nating batas? No? So critical areas itong uh, logbook no? na dapat ay uh, na-filled na up in truth. No? Kasi ito yung question dyan. Talaga bang na-filled up in truth or na-filled up by false misrepresentation. Ibig sabihin, dinadaya. O, dinadaya. Ngayon, pagka dinaya natin yung uh, logbook na yan, ano ang ating magiging liabilities? Okay? Sa mga mentors, sa mga architects, no? and even uh, sa mga students na nanonood ngayon and graduate of architecture, ang first page ng logbook na makikita natin dyan is affidavit. Okay? And yung affidavit na yan, nakalagay dyan na nangangako ka na lahat ng nakasulat sa logbook na yan ay lahat bawang katotohanan lamang. Yan ang pinipirmahan nyo dyan, mga mentor. No? Baka kasi sinasabi nyo, uh, document lang yan. Take note, once na pumasok ito sa Office of the Professional Regulation Commission, this will become a public document. Okay? And, mayroong notary public. Diba? Nagkalagay dyan, subscribe and sworn to before me Nangako ako no, sa notaryo publiko Na lahat na nakasulat sa logbook na yan Ay lahat nangyari, lahat totoo At walang kasinungalingan Yun ang ibig sabihin ng logbook of diversified experience sa affidavit okay? And once pinarmahan yan ng mentor And hindi totoo ang nakalagay dyan And later on may nag-file ng complaint against you, no? na, na, na pinirmahan mo yan, na hindi naman lahat is nakalagay yan, you will be charged of perjury. Okay? Pwede kang makasuhan ng perjury under Article 183 of the Revised Penal Code. Ano sinasabi ng uh, Article 183? False testimony in other cases and perjury in solemn affirmation, the penalty of Aristo Mayor in its maximum period, etc., shall under oath no kasi under oath ang uh, ating uh, affidavit no ang uh, notaryo publiko na nakalagay diyan yung affidavit na yan yung jura is under oath no doon ka ngayon makakasuhan ng perjury kasi dahil ibig sabihin dinaya mo yon no dahil public document siya so nakalagay diyan uh, shall be imposed upon any person who knowingly make untruth false statements and not being included in the provisions of the next preceding articles shall testify under oath or make an affidavit upon any material matter before a competent person authorized to administer oath in cases in which in which the law requires which is yun ang notary public no yung uh, sinasabi diyan na authorized person to administer an oath okay any person who in case of solemn affirmation made in lieu of an oath, shall commit any of the falsehood mentioned made in this and the three preceding articles of this section. So, makakasuhan ho kayo, kayo ng perjury pagka dinaya natin yung logbook at may mag-file ng complaint against you. Ang, ang sinasabi ng ating uh, revised IRR, uh, ng ating IRR sa uh, RA 9266, you will be criminally liable and administratively liable. No? Pwede kayong tanggalan ng lisensya, pwedeng masuspend yung license ng ating Uh, commission pagka mayroong mag-file ng case against you. Okay? So, next is uh, 
how does architectural diversified in turn training be compensated? Ito palaging tanong, no? May bayad ba ang apprenticeship? So, kasi sinasabi ng karamihan, ang apprentice walang bayad. Okay? Libre yan. No? Kasi magte-training ka. Okay? But you know, ano ba talaga ang sinasabi ng labor code? No? Sinasabi ko sa inyo nga, itahi-tahiin natin ito doon sa mga batas na uh, may, may kaugnayan no? sa pag-implement ng ating RA 9266. So ang tanong ngayon is, may bayad ba ang apprenticeship? No? Pag tinignan natin ang ating uh, labor code, no? pag binasa natin yon. Architectural Diversified Training Internship shall be governed by Article 60 of the Labor Code as amended by Section 1, Executive Order Number 111, December 24, 1986. Okay? And sinasabi doon, the contract of employment to be entered into by the architectural firm or an architect with the architectural aspirant shall be in lieu of an, of an apprenticeship agreement and not in lieu of irregular employment. Okay? So, Bago natin itatakel yung uh, compensation, tatakel muna natin to. Ano ba ang kontrata na dapat ini-execute sa engagement ng architect and aspirants? Ang sinasabi ng labor code, dapat apprenticeship agreement, hindi regular employment. Bakit? Magkakaiba ang duties and responsibilities ng ordinaryong empleyado o regular emple na, na empleyado doon sa uh, yung apprentice ng mentorship. So, magkakaiba ang duties and responsibilities. Kaya sinasabi ng labor code, dapat hindi regular employment. It should be an apprenticeship agreement. Otherwise, dapat hindi makredit as apprenticeship pagka-regular employment kasi hindi mo pa may bibigay ang six paces cycle na yun dahil walang mentorship na mangyayari. No? Ang gagawin mo lang, utos ka ng utos sa empleyado mo dahil regular employment sila at pinag, uh, pinagsasahod mo ng regular employment. Okay? And uh, by law, if an aspirant enters into an regular employment agreement rather than in an apprenticeship agreement certifying the logbook of diversified experience by the mentor on a regular employment agreement shall be null and void and not be credited as a diversified experience since there is a misrepresentation of material fact being entered into as the case may be. Okay, so take note of this sa mga mentors. Next, Okay, for purposes of uh, academic discussion, no, nakalagay doon, practical training, learnership, apprenticeship is a practical training. By way of uh, training agreement, regular employment, iba yung uh, agreement, apprenticeship is governed by an apprenticeship agreement. But they are both uh, occupations. Okay, so ngayon, alam na natin kung ano dapat ang kontrata na na ipoprovide sa ating mga aspirants, no? sa ating mga apprentice. Dito na tayo ngayon sa may bayad ba ang apprenticeship? Dapat ba silang may sweldo? Ano ang sinasabi ng labor code? Okay? Sinasabi ng labor code, no? the general rule is that the wage rate provided for by the labor code on apprenticeship agreement and learners is set at 75% of the statutory minimum wage of that of irregular employment. Nasa section 29 ng rule 5 ng book 2 of the labor code yan, na ang sweldo dapat ng apprentice, ang sweldo ng OJT, ang sweldo ng learnership, 75% ng sweldo ng regular employment. Okay? So, hope malinaw no? sa mga architects, sa mentors, no? na hindi libre ang sinasabi ng labor code. Pero ito ngayon, no? paano ba pwedeng maglibre ang uh, apprenticeship uh, mentoring na yan. Okay? As a general rule, 75% ang sweldo ng apprentice ng regular na empleyado. Pero, sinasabi rin sa labor code na the Secretary of Labor and Employment may authorize the hiring of apprentice without compensation whose training on the job is required by the, by the school or training program curriculum, or as requisite for graduation or board examination. Malinaw din na sinasabi ng uh, labor code na pagka yan ay for purposes of board examination, pwedeng walang bayad ang apprenticeship. Pero sinasabi ng labor code, 
the Secretary of Labor and Employment may authorize. Ibig sabihin, kailangan mong ipaalam sa Secretary of Labor and Employment, no? susulat ka sa Secretary of Labor, that these persons were hired as an apprentice for purposes of board examination para ma-exempt ka sa payment ng 75% compensation. Otherwise, pagka hindi ka humingi ng approval sa board o sa sa Secretary of Labor and Employment, ang general rule is that you have to pay 75% of the wage rate of a regular employee na ibabayad mo doon sa iyong apprentice or or uh, diversified uh, trainee. Okay? So yon. Okay? So take note of that uh, requirements under the labor code. Then uh, we go with architectural diversified training obtained abroad. Now, ito critical issues. Now, no? Meron bang uh, nagde-diversified training sa Singapore? Meron bang nagde-diversified training sa ibang bansa? Marami, no? Kasi may may uh, board exam sa Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, may uh, board exam sa UAE, no? So may mga nagte-training doon. Pero ano ba ang uh, sinasabi doon? Is that the diversified training uh, valid, no? Well, disputable. No, hindi ko sinasabing uh, invalid, but uh, disputable, no? As what I've said a while ago, no? Ang uh, agreement dapat na ini-enter into by the mentor and the trainee is apprenticeship agreement. Now, take note na ang mga pupunta ng abroad is covered by a regular employment overseas contract employment and that is not considered as apprenticeship agreement. So, well, uh, tinatanggap ng PRC, no? So, sinasabi ko lang is disputable. Hindi ko sinasabing uh, invalid, no? But the disputable, anyone can question later on if ever na mayroong uh, mag-question, uh, no? Later on, meron tayong meron tayong isang uh, principle diyan kung bakit din uh, hindi pwede, no? The history beyond of that uh, apprenticeship abroad, it's because during the time of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, no, na siya pa yung uh, presidente ng uh, Pilipinas, naglabas siya ng Executive Order 835, no? Authorizing the Professional Regulation Commission, the DOLE, and the uh, the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs to conduct examination abroad, no? So that's the history beyond ng uh, pagbigay ng uh, SP LBE abroad, no? So nagkaroon ng licensure exam abroad and uh, marami nang uh, pumasa no so even this uh, executive order nga disputable din no kasi the power was given to be executed abroad no eh di ba pag arkitekto ka hindi ka nga pwedeng mag uh, practice outside your uh, Philippine uh, jurisdiction no pag labas mo kasi ng ibang bansa hindi ka nga pwedeng uh, hindi ka hindi ka arkitekto no because our authority to practice is limited only within the Philippine uh, jurisdiction no so pag nandoon ka sa ibang bansa Nag-sign and seal ka, di ba? Dapat walang uh, full force and uh, effect ang iyong uh, signature dahil wala ka doon sa uh, Philippine uh, jurisdiction. Okay? So, ito ang basis, legal basis, kung bakit nagkaroon ng uh, SPLB abroad no? because of this uh, executive order. But uh, nobody questions naman. No? So, since na walang question and uh, it was uh, executed by our uh, Professional Regulation Commission, meron silang uh, tinatawag na uh, presumption of uh, regularity no so lahat ng uh, galaw nila lahat ng actions nila is uh, presumed regular unless somebody will question in court no and uh, the court will uh, will uh, issue their uh, opinion whether this executive order will be unconstitutional or constitutional so sa ngayon uh, this uh, executive order is valid dahil wala namang nagki-question sa uh, court okay so in the issue of the uh, logbook, no? although mayroong nag-message sa akin sa YouTube channel that uh, majority of those uh, taking the examinations abroad is also you, uh, filling up the uh, logbook of diversified uh, experience. But in 2017, mayroong uh, resolution ang uh, PRC, PR BOA, no? resolution number uh, 2017-1034, and uh, nilagay nila doon, even sa PRC website nakalagay ito, na ang, uh, ang logbook sa abroad is pwedeng uh, hindi gamitin. No? Nakalagay nga dyan sa item uh, 2.2.1, 2 
no na yung requirements sa architecture licensure examination abroad is pwede na yung uh, certificate of uh, related experience to be signed by the employer no but in my opinion employer are not allowed to uh, sign the logbook of the diversified trainee kasi malinaw doon sa qualifications natin kanina that it should only be signed and sealed by an architect and not by the employer. So, pag nirelax ng uh, commission, di ba, it violates the uh, provisions of the qualifications for examination ng Republic Act 9266 uh, unless otherwise the uh, law or the qualifications will be amended no, and uh, gagawin ito. No? Take note that uh, if there is a conflict between uh, a law and the rules and regulations, the basic law prevails over the uh, rules and regulations and other uh, issuances by the board. But this now, uh, walang nagki-question. So, uh, by presumption of regularity, valid ang uh, actions ng uh, ating uh, PR BOA. But you know, kahit sabihin pa nga, no, no nang message sa akin doon sa YouTube channel ko, na uh, bumagamit ng uh, logbook doon sa Middle East, for example, and uh, it was signed and sealed by uh, a registered and uh, licensed architect. Di ba, walang full force and effect ang iyong uh, lisensya sa abroad dahil nasa labas ka ng uh, Philippine uh, jurisdiction. No? So, yan ay disputable lang. No? Hindi ko sinasabing uh, invalid pa. Okay? So, yan. And then, uh, ayan, no? I, I, I emphasize that already, no? na nakalagay doon is, uh, related work experience for obvious experience side by the employer. No? So, yan, ang uh, presumption ko dyan is uh, disputable siya. Okay? The next will be uh, nag magkakaroon din ng uh, violation of equal protection clause of the Constitution. Bakit? Kasi, pag iniba mo yung requirements abroad, sa requirements ng mga nasa Pilipinas, eh di ba pareho lang yung purpose? No? Diversified training and for licensure examination. Di ba? Eh, dito sa Pilipinas, yung mga aspirants nagkakandarapan ng, uh, ng pag-gain ng uh, diversified training. Tapos, pagdating sa abroad, is i-relax. No? So, there is a possibility of violating the uh, provisions of the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. No? The uh, violation of equal protection uh, clause. Okay? Now, mayroon tayong tinatawag under uh, statutory construction and uh, under the Civil Code ng... Uh, Doctrine of operative fact. Saan na-apply itong doctrine of operative fact? Example, may nag-file ng petition sa court and na-invalid, no? naging unconstitutional, for example, yung resolutions on that diversified training abroad, no? on that examination abroad. Ang mga pumasa ba sa abroad is hindi sila arkitekto? The answer is, arkitekto sila. Ang mga susunod, after the uh, declaration of the court, that that executive order is unconstitutional, that uh, resolution is unconstitutional, unconstitutional, yun pa lang ang magiging invalid. But those who pass the examination uh, prior to the declaration of the court, they are considered as architects, they are considered as uh, valid, no? yung uh, kanilang pagkuha ng examination and even yung diversified uh, training. Okay? So, yun. Now, uh, let us go now to the practice of architecture. This is the uh, main focal point of our law, the practice of architecture. Section 25 of RA 9266 says that no person shall practice architecture in this country or engage in preparing architectural plans, specification, or preliminary data for the erection or alteration of any building located within the boundaries of the country or use the title architect. Wala tayong problema dyan. Self-explanatory. Okay? Pero itong dugtong na nakadilaw, nakalagay doon, prohibited or display or use any title. Anong any title? Kahit hindi ka gumagamit ng word na arkitekto, pero mayroon kang uh, ginagamit na any title, no? like for example, architectural designer. No? That is prohibited. Bakit? Tingnan nyo yung kadugtong. Any title, sign, card, advertisement, or other device to indicate such person practices or offers to practice architecture or is an architect. Okay? So, any words 
any title, any sign indicates that such persons offers to practice architecture is prohibited under Section 25 of the law. Ngayon, sir, paano natin malalaman ang sinasabi natin yan na it offers or offers to practice architecture in the Philippines? Okay. If a person who are using any title, sign, card, advertisement, or other device to indicate that he is practicing architecture is executing any scope of practice enumerated in Article 1, Section 3, Number 3 and 4, then he is illegally, illegally practicing architecture. Doon lang naman tayo iikot eh. No? Sa scope of practice natin, sa Section uh, 3, Number 3 and 4, nandun ang uh, lahat ng uh, scope of practice ng isang arkitekto. Pag ginawa yun ng hindi arkitekto, that is considered as illegal practice of architecture or unlawful practice of architecture. Kahit hindi pa sila gumagamit ng word na architect sa kanilang pangalan. Kahit wala silang title na architect sa kanilang pangalan. As long that they are used in a sign, card, advertisement, or other device to indicate such person practices or offers to practice architecture. Ito ngayon ang isang example. Halimbawa, nag-post ang isang estudyante, nag-post ang isang graduate of architecture ng kanyang rendering works sa social media. Is that a noble practice of architecture? The, my answer is yes. Bakit? What is the purpose of posting that in social media? To solicit. ba? To solicit. Hindi mo naman pwedeng practice yan, no? Pero, that is kind of solicitation na pwedeng kumuha ng uh, project no? na may pumunta sa kanyang uh, kliyente. No? That is uh, considered as a device to indicate that such person is practices uh, or offers to practice architecture. Kasi kung practice-practice lang yan, you can uh, have it in yourself. No? But posting in social media, there is an intent of solicitation. No? Soliciting uh, projects. No? Marami ngayon yan, naglilipa na sa social media, no? sa Facebook, marami. Okay? And sinasabi ng Section 25, unless such person shall have received from the board a certificate of registration and be issued a professional identification card in the manner herein provided and shall thereafter comply with the provisions of this act. In R545, wala itong uh, issuance of PRC ID. No? Ang pinaka-importante kasi dito is the issuance of the certificate of uh, registration. So, yun ang malinaw na sinasabi ng Section 25. No? Ano yung practice ng architecture and sino ang prohibited to practice architecture to prepare uh, scope of practice of architecture enumerated in Article 1, Section 3, Number 3, and 4 of RA 9266. Okay, so you have to link this uh, Section 25 in uh, Article 1, Section 3, Number 3, and 4 kasi doon lang tayo babalik kung lahat ng nandoon ay ginagawa ng mga uh, those non-architect, they are already prohibited uh, according to Section 25 of our law. Okay? And of course, this Section 25, Section 25 hindi mangyayari pag wala kang compliance sa uh, Article 3, Section 12, examination, uh, Article uh, 3, Section 18, issuance of the Certificate of Registration, Article uh, 17, the uh, taking of an oath of professions, and then the use of seal under Section 20 of Article 3 of RA 9266. And then, uh, Section 21, indication of the PTR, in all documents to be executed by a registered and licensed architect. Okay? So, diniscuss natin yung Section 25. Ang sinasabi sa Section 25 na ang pwede lang mag-practice doon is those persons who were issued a certificate of registration from the Professional Regulation Commission. But you know, there were three progressive requirements before a person can practice architecture under Section 25. Okay? And that is the compliance of the examination, the compliance of the issuance of the certificate of registration, and compliance to take an oath of professionals. Ito ngayon ang problema ng ating mga pumasa noong January 2020 no? dahil hindi pa sila nakapag-take ng oath. Naunahan pa ng uh, pumasa sa bar exam sa Supreme Court no na nung may lang na release yung uh, exam nakapag-take ng oath na abogado no pero ang ating mga uh, kaibigan 
ng mga <clears throat> baguhang uh, arkitekto sa profession January pa pumasa no hanggang ngayon naghihinga host dahil wala pang aksyon ang ating uh, PRC kung kailan ng kanilang uh, taking of an oath no? so napakaimportante kasi pagka hindi ka nagtake ng oath you are not a full-fledged architect you are not yet allowed to practice the architecture profession so yung pinakaimportante dito yung dalawa no taking of an oath and the issuance of certificate of uh, registration kasi yun ang requirements di ba you have to pass the exam you have to take an oath of professions and you were issued a certificate of registration take nota ang sinasabi ng batas you have to pass the licensure exam hindi sinasabi ng batas ng batas na you have to take the licensure exam kasi maraming uh, baka yung iba maraming take no one to sawa na yung pagtake ng licensure exam that is not the one na uh, Uh, provided by the law. No, you have to pass the licensure exam. Okay. Now, napaka-critical issue din ang pag-take ng oath. <clears throat> Kasi, di ba, pag tininan natin ngayon, sinasabi ko, yung mga pumapasa sa board exam natin noong uh, January 2020, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa nakapag-take ng oath. And they are not allowed to practice architecture profession pagka hindi sila nakapag-take ng oath. <clears throat> okay? But, uh, Pag-uusapan natin, ano ba kasi ang oath of profession? Bakit kailangan na kailangan ito before you can practice the architecture profession? Okay? So, sa mga bagong pasa, kung nandyan ba kayo, sa UAPGA, no? <clears throat> dapat malaman nyo to, Okay? So, these are the oath of professionals. Ito yung nire-recite natin pagka tayo ay mag-oath taking. Okay? Ang sinasabi dyan is, I, Juan de la Cruz of Manila, hereby solemnly swear, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Philippines, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will obey the laws, legal orders, and executive order promulgated by duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines, and that I impose this obligation upon myself voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So ano ang ibig sabihin ng first paragraph ng Oath of Profession? Ang first paragraph ng oath of professions is an oath of allegiance and obeying the laws of the Republic of the Philippines. Meron nga tayong oath of allegiance, no? Pero pag nagkaroon tayo ng opportunity abroad, no? Iwanan natin ang Pilipinas. So wala tayong oath of allegiance pag ganyan. Okay? The second uh, paragraph of the uh, oath of professionals says that I solemnly swear that at all times and places I will adhere closely to the ethical standards and professional rules generally accepted by the architecture professions in the Philippines. And that, I will faithfully discharge to the best of my ability the duties and obligations in incumbent upon legally authorized architect practitioner. So help me God. No? Sinabi mo pa sa may kapal, no? tulungan niyo po ako, Panginoon, no? pero you are still continuing violating the code of uh, ethical conduct no you are violating the laws of the uh, republic of the philippines no sabi nila itong auto professions kasi is only a mere ceremony no and uh, sabi nila wala yan magtatapos yung mag-recite wala na yan but you know no in the legal practice ito yung pinakamabilis magtanggal ng lisensya pag sinight itong uh, sa complaint no pag sinight itong you violate the auto professionals tanggal ang lisensya mo No, ito yung pinakamabilis magtanggal and not the specific uh, uh, allegations. Okay? So, ano ba itong oath of professionals? Oath of professionals is not only a mere ceremony. No? It is a sacred trust to which all professionals have subscribed themselves to the pursuit of the profession. It is not a mere ceremony or formality for practicing a profession to be forgotten afterwards. Nor is it a mere words Drift and hollow, but a secret trust that a professionals must uphold and keep inviolable at all times. Malinaw yan, no? sinabi ng Supreme Court, no? that it is a secret trust that a professionals must uphold and keep inviolable at all times. Sinabi ng Supreme Court yan sa case ni Ting Dumali versus Torres, 427 SCRA 108. Next, nag-exam ka na, pumasa ka, nakapag-take ka na ng oath, ano ngayon ang privileges ng isang architect in passing the licensure uh, examination? Okay? 
Ang uh, privilege sa isang architect is that he or she can practice architecture profession within the boundary of Philippine territory. Architect, pwede ba ako mag-practice ng profession ko doon sa West Philippine Sea? The answer is yes. Hindi naman natin dinenay ang West Philippine Sea that, is, that it is already uh, belongs to the uh, to, to China. No? So you can. Uh, kung hindi ka itataboy ng mga Chinese uh, soldiers doon. But we are allowed because that is uh, still part of the uh, Philippine territory. Okay? And then, uh, he or she can sign and seal architectural documents prepared by him or under his direct supervision. And he or she can collect professional fee to the services rendered. He or she can perform services enumerated under Article 1, Section 3 of RA 9266. And he or she can avail the privileges, privileges provided for by the integrated and accredited Professional Organization of Architects or the IAPOA. Okay, babalikan ko lang ang uh, number 2. No? Kasi sa number 2, dito ang pinaka-common violations ng mga architects no? na nagkaroon ng mga uh, misunderstanding no? or misinterpretation of the law. No? Dito kasi nakalagay, he or she can sign and seal architectural documents prepared by him or under his direct supervision. Okay. Sa Article 1, Section 3, Number 3 and 4 of Bar A 9266, pag tinignan ninyo dyan, wala kayong makikitang scope of practice ng signing and sealing ng architectural documents to non-registered person. Wala kayong makikita dyan na pwede kang mag-sign and seal ng architectural documents na gawa ng iba. Okay? Wala. Hindi natin business ang signing and sealing, although marami ang gumagawa. No? Kadalasan ngayon sa mga civil engineers na maraming nagsasign and seal na mga gawa ng mga non-registered persons. Ang sinasabi ng batas natin na prepared by an architect or under his direct supervision, ibig sabihin, ginawa ng empleyado mo which is under your direct supervision. Pero pag ginawa yan ng non-registered person, ginawa yan ng mga illegal practitioners, that is not considered as your direct supervision. In fact, you are aiding or abetting that non-registered persons in the illegal practice of the profession and what you are doing is a malpractice of the profession. Tingnan natin ang komentaris ng New York State Law in the signing and sealing ng architectural documents. Ang sinasabi ng state law, no, ng New York State Law sa signing and sealing ng architectural documents, the practice of certain builders, developers, and contractors who attempt to have construction documents legitimized with a seal of a licensed professional after they have been prepared by an unlicensed individual is illegal. Such practice is known as rubber stamping and the licensee is guilty of professional misconduct. Tingnan ninyo ang ating section uh, 7.9 ng ating Code of Ethics, 2006 Code of Ethics. Malinaw na malinaw din na nakalagay an architect shall not affix his or her signature and seal to any plans or professional documents prepared by other persons or entities and not done under his or her direct supervision. So, wala ho tayong business ng signing and sealing. Ang pwede lang ho natin permahan ang sarili natin gawa or gawa ng ating staff, gawa ng ating uh, CAD operators na employed sa office. Okay? Na sarili nating project, sa atin pumasok ang transaction. Pero pag yan ay personal uh, transaction ng isang illegal practitioners and you sign and seal, then you violate 7.9 ng ating 2006 Code of Ethics. And you are engaging in the malpractice and you are aiding or abetting that non-registered person in the illegal practice of the architecture profession. So take note of this kasi pwede kang matanggalan ng lisensya if somebody will file a case against you. Okay, so our architect seal is not a business seal. It is a professional seal. Kaya nga sinasabi natin doon is dapat pinangangalagaan natin ng ating silyo na hindi pwedeng paglaruan. Kasi hindi naman ito business seal. No, it is a professional seal. Okay, next, uh, tapos na yung privilege doon sa practice. Ano ngayon ang... Uh, 
practice of architecture. No? Anong characteristics ng practice of architecture? Ang characteristics now sa practice of architecture is that practice of architecture is not a natural right. Not even a constitutional right. Hindi mo pwedeng uh, sabihin sa gobyerno na ibigay mo sa akin yan. No? Hindi pwede. Kasi this is only a mere privilege no? in the practice of profession. So, a license does not vest absolute rights in the holder. Thus, without offending the due process and the uh, impairment clause of the Constitution, it can be revoked by the state anytime subject to the uh, requirement of due process. Okay? Then, practice of architecture is a highly personal privilege. Bakit? We are governed by our code of ethics. Okay? Practice of architecture is limited to citizens of good moral character. Bakit? Pag nawalan ka ng good moral character, pwede kang tanggalan ng lisensya. Later on, meron akong uh, babasa yung kaso. Example, no? And I, I think uh, that, that uh, case is very popular and uh, you know that uh, person, no? Practice of architecture is only for those person with specialized educational qualification. Hindi pwedeng uh, mag-practice ng profession ang hindi nag-aral ng uh, architecture profession. Practice of uh, architecture is duly ascertained and certified through licensure uh, examination. And then, practice of architecture is not a business, not a trade, but a profession or occupation. No, Kaya nga hindi pwedeng... Uh, Yung sinasabi natin, it is more on service, no? Rather than uh, a business, okay? And then, uh, it cannot be subject for succession. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, pag namatay ka, pwede ba yung bunsong anak ko yung, uh, yung magkukuha uh, ng lisensya ko? Hindi pwede. Kasi walang, walang hereditary rights ang ating mga mahal sa buhay, no? Pagka ikaw ay namatay, tanggal ang yung uh, lisensya, hindi ka na arkitekto, Okay? cannot be bartered or leased. Hindi natin pwedeng i-bartered na pwede ba i-barter ko muna sa yung aking lisensya, ikaw muna mag-practice ng architecture, no? Sa isang track na bigas. Hindi pwede, no? Cannot be bartered. Kasi nga, uh, yung characteristics niya is limited only to those persons, no? With the uh, academic qualifications and professional qualifications. And can be taken away by the government anytime subject to the requirement of due process of law. And of course, our profession is in noble profession. Sana nga, noble pa rin hanggang ngayon. No? So, noble profession because we are governed by our duties. No? Duties to the client, to the contractor, to the manufacturers, dealers, and agents. And our duties to colleagues and subordinates. And most of all, our duties to the public. If there is a conflict between that duties and the duties to the public, duties to the public shall prevail. Okay? Although, pag tinignan natin ngayon, most of our client is private clients and not really the public as a whole. No? Pero pag tinignan natin, as a service, no? our duty is to the public. Kaya pag tinignan mo yung architect's credo, di ba? we have our duty to God and to our country. No? Because that is our duty to the public. Okay? Next is, uh, who can practice architecture now? Pumasa ka sa board, no? alam mo na yung characteristics. So, who can practice architecture now? Only natural person who was issued a certificate of registration from the board is allowed to practice architecture. Okay? Hindi pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture ang juridical person such as corporation. No? Hindi pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture yan. Pag tininan nyo yung ating section 37 ng uh, RA 9266, di ba? We are allowed to register as a corporation, a partnership, no? na mga lahat ng uh, mga friends mo as architects, no? Pero, that corporation itself is not allowed to practice as a juridical entity. Kaya pag binasa mo yung ating Section 37, the one liable, pag nagkaroon ng problema later on, is the natural person, the stakeholders, the architects, and not really the corporation, no? Ang uh, kagandahan lang dyan sa pag-register mo sa Securities and Exchange Commissions, sa DTI, is magkaroon kayo ng uh, isang corporate name no pero the liabilities will be shouldered uh, personally by those persons who are stakeholders of the corporation no in view of the uh, personality of uh, separate and distinct personality between the corporation and a natural uh, person okay take note 
ano ang lacking na requirements ng isang juridical person? Bakit hindi sila allowed mag-practice ng architecture profession? Una, ang juridical person hindi nag-aral, wala silang academic qualifications. Only natural persons ang nag-aral ng architecture profession. A corporation cannot take licensure examination, hindi pwedeng mag-take ng exam ang korporasyon, kaya nga uh, hindi sila pwedeng mag mag-practice ng profession. A corporation cannot, cannot take an oath, an oath no? Hindi rin pwedeng mag-take ang oath ng ng oath ang corporation, no? Kaya nga minsan, uh, marami sa atin nagre-register sa DTI. And the, ang nire-register sa DTI, ibang pangalan rather than those uh, provided in the certificate of registration. Take note, ang pangalan na nire-register niyo sa DTI na hindi niyo pangalan is not allowed to practice architecture. They were only given Uh, they were only granted by the DTI for that uh, trade name. No? Pero pag tinignan ninyo, ang trade name na yan is hindi allowed mag-practice ng architecture. Hindi nga dapat pwedeng mag-appear siya sa title block ng ating ginagawang uh, mga plano. Bakit? That trade name is not allowed to practice architecture. Ang allowed lang to practice architecture is the uh, owner of that uh, trade name which is a natural person. No? Ang pwede lang mag-practice is kung sino ang nakapangalan sa Certificate of Registration issued by the Professional Regulation Commission. Huwag na kayong gumawa pa ng iba't ibang pangalan. No? Kasi, sa totoo lang, di ba, you are not proud of being an architect na ang, ang binigyan ka ng titulo ng uh, PRC na magiging arkitekto. Pag binasa niyo yung Certificate of Registration na nakalagay dyan, ang pangalan na nakalagay dito ay binibigyan ng pribilihyo na gumamit ng titulong arkitekto or architect basahin niyo ang inyong certificate of registration tapos gagawa kayo ng sariling trade name na hindi naman allowed or hindi naman binigyan ng authority ng uh, professional uh, regulation commission and of course di ba you are not proud of later on pag sumikat ang sumikat is yung trade name hindi yung pangalan mo being an architect of that uh, trade name na talagang binigyan ng authority ng uh, professional regulation commission to practice architecture uh, profession so In this regard, no, mayroon lang nangyari kasi makaramihan sa atin uh, in this practice of profession uh, nagre-register ng business name. No? Kumukuha ng business permit no? pagkatapos ng DTI, punta ng munisipyo, kumukuha ng uh, business permit. Ang tanong doon is kailangan ba natin kumuha ng business permit? This is already a, an issue before with the dentistry. Mayroong isang... Uh, The dental clinic sa Gapan Nueva Ecija yata. And uh, nag-practice siya ng uh, dental uh, profession without uh, business uh, permit. Okay? Nasita ng uh, city hall dahil walang uh, business permit. Okay? Ngayon, ang uh, reason nitong uh, dentist is that this is a practice of profession. So, dapat hindi kami kumukuha ng business permit. Kasi sinasabi, totoo lang, ang sinasabi sa ating local government code, ang requirements lang natin is, mayroon kang PTR. Professional tax lang ang, bay ang babayaran natin. No? Eh, in the amount of 300 pesos. Then that is already covered for us to practice our architectural professions all over the uh, Philippines. So, hindi kailangan kumuha ng uh, business permit kahit nga mag-opisina ka pa sa commercial space. Umabot ng court, no? ano sabi ng RTC? Tama ang uh, dental clinic. This is a practice of profession at hindi ito business, no? Hindi dapat kumuha ng business permit kasi hindi ito business, no? Pero ang kulatilya is that maliban na lang kung ikaw may produkto na uh, nag nagtitinda uh, at the same time, halimbawa, dental clinic ka. At the same time, nagtitinda ka ng mga dental apparatus. Ganyan pagtitinda mo ng dental apparatus is a business and not part of your practice of profession. So, in the field of architecture, halimbawa, meron kang office and nag-business uh, ka rin ng plotting services. So, yung plotting services mo, meron business permit. Yung practice of profession is wala. Okay? So, yung uh, DILG, naglabas din ng kanilang uh, directives doon sa uh, Nueva Ecija kung saan uh, municipality yung uh, nabilong, itong uh, dentistry na to. And sinabi ng DILG na tama itong uh, dentistry. Tama ang sinabi ng court na hindi mo kailangan kumuha ng business permit kasi practice of profession is an occupation, a profession and not a uh, business. No? Although, well, karamihan sa atin talagang natatakot sa 
sa local government units no na baka biglang uh, ipasara no biglang uh, magkakaroon ng penalties no but you know talagang hindi dapat tayo kumukuha ng business permit because practice of profession is not a business pag tiningnan mo yung provisions ng local government code wala diyan ang practice of profession as a business kaya nga hindi tayo dapat pwedeng i-tax doon sa business permits na yan dahil practice of profession ito ang sinasabi lang ng local government code is kailangan natin kumuha ng PTR our professional uh, tax no, na inisyuan tayo ng uh, uh, professional tax receipts and yun ay uh, nilalagay natin sa mga documents nating uh, pinipirmahan yung ating PTR number that is already enough now, to support on that itong uh, Department of uh, Finance naglabas din ng kanilang memorandum circular no sa kanilang memorandum circular 001-2020 no January 2, 2020 nakalagay diyan sa number 2 a professional who has paid his her professional tax shall be exempt from the payment of business permit no iba naman ang interpretation ang sinasabi ng uh, Department of Finance is that kumuha na lang kayo ng business permit pero exempt na kayo sa payment wala nang bayad no But for me, in my opinion, dapat hindi talaga pwedeng kumuha ng business permit kasi business pa rin yun eh. No? It is only intended for a business per se and not on the practice of profession. Pero okay na rin ang sinasabi ng Department of Finance na pwede kayong kumuha ng business permit pero exempted na ang practice of profession sa payment of uh, business uh, permit. Okay? So pwede nyo dalhin yung uh, memorandum circular ng Department of Finance no instructing uh, all uh, uh, local government units no na sa treasurers na uh, pwedeng kumuha ng business permit ang isang professionals pero exempt dapat sa pagbayad ng business permit uh, fees okay so yon yon nang sa uh, issue ng uh, business permit now in the last year 2019 Meron na tayong bagong corporation code, no? And uh, nakalagay diyan sa Republic Act 11232, no? Sa bagong uh, corporation code, pwede na magtayo ng uh, one man corporation, no? Kasi sa old uh, old corporation code, pagka nagtayo ka ng isang korporasyon, 'di ba? Dapat tatlo kayo, apat kayo, no? Ngayon sa bagong corporation code, pwede ka magtayo ng isang uh, corporation na mag-isa ka lang. No, considered ka na as a uh, one man corporation. No, pag binasa natin yung uh, section na uh, 116, no, one person corporation, nakalagay doon sa kanyang uh, second paragraph, no? Uh, banks and uh, quasi banks print the uh, printed trust insurance public and uh, public uh, listed companies and non-chartered government owned and controlled corporation may not incorporate as one person corporation provided that a natural person who is a license to exercise a profession may not organize as one person corporation for the purpose of exercising such profession except as otherwise provided under special laws okay sinasabi pwedeng magtayo ng one man corporation pero hindi pa rin pwede sa practice of profession unless provided in special laws which is ang RA 9266 is a special laws. Okay? And under Section 37 of RA 9266, we are allowed to register as a uh, corporate uh, uh, practice no? as long that the members of that uh, corporation who want to register is all uh, registered architects. Okay? Only Filipino architects and 75% of that is architects and the 25% is the allied professionals example civil engineers structural engineers interior designers no and the uh, other allied uh, professionals so pwede pero ang problema naman is inalaw ka nga ng section 37 ng ating uh, special law to uh, register as a corporation pero pag tiningnan ninyo ang ating uh, section 37 sinasabi pa rin doon ang liable pa rin with that corporation is not the corporation itself but the stockholders the stakeholders the individual architects yun pa rin ang liable and not the corporation per se so the useless ang pagtayo ng corporation if the, the liability will still belong to uh, those uh, individual uh, stockholders no? so parang nagiging purpose na lang is that 
you can uh, make a corporation para lang magkaroon ng uh, name no na halimbawa lahat ng mga apelyido niyo dugtong-dugtong niyo doon no para magkaroon kayo ng isang corporate name but uh, those liable for that uh, practice of profession is still the individual architects who were issued uh, a certificate of registration by the professional regulations uh, commission it is a general rule no that uh, corporation cannot registered as uh, cannot practice a profession no marami ng legal uh, uh, opinion ang securities and exchange commissions na sinasabi hindi pwede magpractice ng architecture ang isang corporation dahil nga by the view of uh, separate the uh, distinct personality between that natural person and a juridical uh, person okay ito yung mga legal uh, opinion ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. Sabi ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission sa mga opinion nila, the practice of architecture is a professional service, admission to which be determined upon the basis of individual personal qualification. So it is only intended for a natural person. Okay? The leg legislature, in authorizing the formation of corporation to carry out on a lawful business, did not intend to include the work of the learned profession which is yon tayo as a natural person na nag-aral no sinabi yan doon sa Supreme Court ruling cited in the Department of Justice opinion number 144 series of 1989 and then practice of profession cannot be registered as a corporation upon the premise that the practice thereof must be based on individual personal qualifications. Human personal qualifications for the practice of professions requiring a license cannot be possessed by a corporation. So, sinabi ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission yan sa kanilang legal opinion dated April 25, 1996 addressed to Mr. Frank O. Asuncion. And then, uh, sinabi rin ng Securities and Exchange Commission that opening up a foreign representative or branch office instead will not make any differences, no? kahit sasabihin pa yan, uh, branch ng uh, foreign company, not allowed also to practice uh, a profession. Personal qualifications for the practice of civil engineering and architecture professions cannot be possessed by a corporation and in view of the distinct and separate personality of a corporation from individual members or stockholders, it could not have the power to do an act requiring a license which only the individual members or stockholders code obtain. No? Sinabi ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission opinion dated September 15, 1992 addressed to our very own architect Luis M. Ferrer. Okay? So, in terms of liability pag nagkaroon ng partnership, no? while the Securities and Exchange Commission pursue to Section 24 of RE544, the Civil Engineering Law, as amended at Section uh, 34 of RE545, now RA-9266. No? We are now on Section 37 of RA-9266. As amended, does not permit civil engineers and architects to practice as a corporate actually entity as per se. No? But to practice only using this corporate trade name but individual pa rin ang uh, liabilities. Okay? It allows engineers or architects to form and register as a partnership wherein all the partners thereof are duly licensed as such under Philippine laws. But in such case, it is the individual engineer or architect and not the partnership firm who engages in the practice of engineering or architecture and is responsible for his own acts as such. So, malinaw, no? Na, architecto pa rin, yung natural person pa rin ang magkatake ng liability and not the corporation. So, parang nagiging useless lang and palamuti lang yung uh, pag-open ng uh, trade name Parating lang lang na medyo malaki ang uh, firm, no? Pero individually, yun pa rin ang uh, liable. Okay? As an incorporator or stockholder, a duly licensed architect or engineer can be an incorporator or stockholder or be hired as an employee in a corporation, engaged in other line of business such as construction company to render his services as such, the hiring of which is merely incidental to carry out the corporate purposes. But in no case shall the corporation hire architects or engineers to carry out on the business of the practice of architecture or 
engineering. So, hindi pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture or engineering ang construction firm. They are only allowed by contracting to construct and not as a design and build uh, services. Sinabi yan ng Securities and Exchange Commission sa kanilang opinion, dated April 25, 1996, addressed to Mr. Frank O. Asuncion, Sr., Securities and Exchange Commission opinion dated April 18, 1996, addressed to Mr. Nestor Ismanio. Si, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission opinion dated January 4, 1994, addressed to Mr. Antonio A. Mansuelo. Okay? Because it is only the Professional Regulation Commission as the government agency which has the, pa the position to determine the extent of the professional services of the professionals and that the Securities and Exchange Commission. So, sinabi rin yan ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission sa kanilang uh, legal opinion dated December 15, 1993 addressed to Mr. Antonio A. Mansueto. Okay? So, next, can the word architects or engineers be used in a corporate name? Okay? So, as a general rule, no, uh, in a corporate name, sa korporasyon, hindi pwedeng gamitin dapat yung word na engineer, engineering, or architects. In a partnership, pwedeng gamitin yon. Halimbawa, Juan de la Cruz and uh, Jose Rizal, architects and partners. Pwede yon. On the uh, personal name no, of a natural person, pwedeng idugtong yon kasi pareho kayong arkitekto. But in a corporate name, as a juridical person, they are not allowed to use the, the, the word uh, engineer, engineering, architects because that title will only be vested to you by the Professional Regulation Commission and not by the Securities and Exchange Commission because that is considered as a practice of profession, yung term na yon. Okay? So, they can use only the word engineering as part of the corporate name as a general rule, no? Uh, only for uh, the use not to confuse the public Na, that such uh, merely modifies another word pertaining to a thing, a product which a corporation intends to manufacture or sell but not on the practice of the architecture and engineering uh, profession. Okay, may a foreign architect and a Filipino architect form a partnership? The answer is no. Malinaw sa atin, Section 37, that the partnership should only be for Filipino citizens. So, hindi pwede. How about non-registered persons? Mas lalong hindi. Because non-registered persons is not allowed to practice architecture. So, ang non-registered persons, hindi pwedeng maging kapitalista no? sa practice of profession. Although, well, in real uh, life, nangyayari. No? So, I don't know how does uh, the board should address that uh, issues. No? Now, uh, na, na discuss na natin who can practice architecture, privileges. Sino ngayon ang hindi pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture? Okay? Letter A, those persons who are not registered and licensed as architect by the Professional Regulation Commission is not allowed to practice architecture. No? Pag hindi ka uh, na-register sa board, wala kang uh, certificate of registration, you are not allowed to practice architecture. No? Nasa Section 22, Section 25, Section 29, Section 34, and Section 36 ng RA 9266. Those foreign architects who are not holder of a special temporary permit issued by the Professional Regulation Commission under its regulatory board, hindi rin pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture sa Pilipinas. Although maraming foreigners na pumapasok dito no, sa Pilipinas. And then, uh, those registered and licensed architects whose registration are being revoked. Pag na-revoke yung license mo, yung authority to practice mo, yung certificate of registration mo, you are not allowed to practice architecture anymore. Okay? Those registered persons and licensed architects whose registration are being suspended by the Professional Reg Regulation Commission or those architects who withdraw their certificate of uh, registration, they are not allowed to practice architecture in the Philippines. Last one, dead architects. Ang mga patay ng arkitekto, hindi na yan pwedeng mag-practice pa ng profession. Bakit ko sinali yan? Kasi dati, meron kaming uh, nakikita na patay na yung arkitekto, No? Pero may nagsasign and seal pa sa pangalan niya. Pumasok pa, nag-apply ng building permit. No? They are not allowed already. Kaya nga sinasabi ko, the practice of profession is not allowed by succession. No? Kasi pag namatay ka, the privilege granted to you by the state, dapat wala na. No? So sa mga, alam mo, may architectural firm, 
And then may anak siya ron. No? Hindi pwedeng ipamana sa kanyang anak ang kanyang uh, practice of profession because that privilege, once an architect uh, will die, that is not considered already, this is not considered already as an uh, architect. And that uh, privilege of practice is not allowed to be uh, in succession by any uh, family members. By the way, nakalimutan ko lang kanina, doon sa mga hindi pa nag-take ng oath nila, no, ng, ng oath of professions, and hindi pa na-issue yung certificate of registration, huwag muna kayong inom ng inom dyan, no? Kasi hindi pa kayo arkitekto sa ngayon, no? Uh, minsan may mga pumapasa sa atin na pagka kakarilis pangalan ng result, no? Nakita yung pangalan nila doon sa sa result na pumasa, inuman ka agad, no? Alam nyo, mayroon isang case na pumasa sa bar exam, and then uh, hindi pa nakapag-take ng oath, no? hindi pa nakapag-sign ng role of attorney, nagkaroon ng traffic alter altercation sa Bindia, no? and that uh, traffic altercation resulting to a shooting incident. So, napatay, no? na, na, na barel yung uh, pumasa sa bar, no? and uh, nung na, na barel namatay, yung uh, family members, yung parents, nagpunta sa Supreme Court, and nagsabi uh, sa Supreme Court na pwede ho bang kami nilang ang mag-take ng oath in behalf of our uh, dead uh, son, no? So, sabi na Supreme Court, hindi ho pwede kasi ang pag-take ng oath is a uh, personal undertaking. Hindi pwedeng mag-take ng oath ang any of the family members. So, sa mga hindi pa nag-take ng oath, yung mga pumasa sa January 2020, iwasan muna natin na magkaroon tayo ng... Uh, ng uh, any uh, altercation dyan, no? Kasi baka mamaya, hindi pa rin nakapag-take ng oath, hindi natin magagamit ang ating title na architect, no? Uh, take note, guys. Pagka ikaw ay namatay, automatic yan. Ang privilege mo is matatanggal na sa iyo ng state, no? Hindi mo nga dapat pwedeng ilagay sa lapida, no? Kasi on the moment of death, you are not already considered as architect. Terminated na ang privilege granted to you by the state, no? Well, uh, mahilig tayo sa memorabilia, no? Tayo mga Filipino, kaya nilalagay natin sa ating lapida kapag namatay ka, architect. No? Hindi na tayo yung UAP sa dulo, RIP. No? So, yun na yung ating title doon. Okay? So, yan. So, take note of that. Okay? Okay, section 34, non-registered persons cannot claim equivalent service. Ibig sabihin, pagka hindi ka lisensyado, hindi ka pwede mag-perform ng lahat ng scope of practice enumerated in Article 1, Section 3, Number 3, and 4 of RA 92. 66. At the same time, in uh, Section 36, also, you are prohibited to collect professional fee. You are not also allowed to collect professional fee. Kasi you are you are not allowed to practice uh, architecture uh, profession. No? So, yun. And then, uh, let's go now to uh, the question whether an architect can advertise his profession. Okay? So, an architect can advertise his profession. No? These are the rationale. Okay? Ang general rule, architects are prohibited to, ar to advertise his profession in paid advertisement. Hindi ka pwedeng magbayad, although well, may mga gumagawa. No? So, hindi ka pwedeng magbayad sa radio station, sa TV station, para i-market no, na, oh, for plans and design, uh, call architect ganito. No? Hindi pwede kasi prohibited sa ating uh, 2006 Code of Ethics ang uh, advertisement, no? paid advertisement. But of course, yung rationale behind is that it is not proper for an architect to solicit services through direct uh, through direct business advertisement for the following reasons. Architecture is a profession and not a business. And architects are not merchants. Hindi tayo dyan na naglalako sa uh, public no, na para tayong uh, nagtitinda sa palengke. Okay? Advertising is an undignified way of making known an architect's service. And, it's bad to, and uh, it is a bad taste that is, it is considered as lowering the dignity of the uh, profession. Okay? So, pwede tayo magkaroon ng indirect advertisement. No? Ang sinasabi ng ating Code of Ethics, ito yung mga indirect advertisement. An architect, uh, through advancing public knowledge, no? pwede, silang, uh, pwede kang interviewin sa radio, pwede kang interviewin sa TV, no? For advancing public knowledge, pero kung interviewin ka at sasabihin mo doon sa, sa interview, no, na uh, sa akin na kayong magpagawa kasi mura ako, bawal yun, no? Ang uh, ating advertisement is only to advance public knowledge about our profession and not solicitation. Okay? 
An architect may opt to write books. No? Example ako, nagsulat ako ng libro. Nagkaroon ako ng dalawang libro. So, part yan ng, adver ng indirect advertisement also ng isang uh, arkitekto. Ano ba? Nag-advertise ka ng libro mo sa radio station, sa TV. Allowed yon because you are not soliciting uh, works no? for the public and that is not uh, paid advertisement. Be a regular columnist of a publication. No? Diba? Si National President natin, meron siyang column sa, sa Manila Times. No? So, allowed yon. That is uh, an indirect uh, advertisement for the advancement of the profession. And then, uh, active uh, participation in any forum, seminars like this. No? So, allowed yon as an uh, indirect advertisement of an uh, architect. Okay? Ang prohibited na sinasabi ng ating Code of Ethics is that bawal ang paid advertisement Bawal ang self-laudatory, yun ang uh, nagbubuhat ka ng bangko. Bawal yung exaggerated, yung sobra-sobra naman pagka nagkwento ka ng iyong uh, profile, no? kahit hindi naman totoo, sinasabi mo na ganito ka. No? Bawal na bawal as an advertisement ng isang uh, architect. And then, of course, misleading publicity. Yun ang pinagbabawal sa ating uh, section na uh, 3.4 ng ating uh, Code of Ethics. Okay? So, May mga instances where solicitations may be permitted. Example, by the use of an architect's service profiles. No? So, Siyempre, pag nagbigay ka ng iyong service profiles, nakalagay doon ang iyong letterhead. No? Nakalagay doon yung logo, nakalagay yung pangalan mo. That is considered as uh, solicitations but permitted under uh, our Code of Ethics. Okay? By the use of our architect's letterheads, no? by the use of our uh, business cards. No? Take note guys ha. Always use the uh, term business card. Do not use the term calling card. Marami kasing gumagamit sa ating mga professionals ng calling card. Ang calling card ho pang call boy at pang call girl lang yon, no? Ang sa atin ho is a uh, professional business card. Oh, dapat na uh, professional business card ang ating term na ginagamit. Okay? And then uh, by the use of the architect's uh, professional uh, biographical and then, uh, informative data, resume mo, no, yung yung CV, no? Inclusion of an architect's name in telephone directories that is uh, allowed as uh, uh, solicitations no kasi di ba pag nilagay naman yung pangalan mo doon siyempre maglalagay ka ng title na architect or uh, halimbawa uh, naglagay ka doon ng uh, pangalan ng firm mo sa yellow pages ng uh, telephone directory allowed yon no ng ating uh, code of ethics that is uh, considered as solicitations but permitted uh, inclusion of An architect's name in the organization membership directories allowed. Publication of an architect's name in a newspaper and soliciting hiring of employees allowed din yun, no? Pag nag-hire ka ng, uh, ng employee, no? Eh, sir, paano, sir, pag sa orbituaries? Allowed, no? Kasi orbituaries naman yon, no? Eh, paano, sir, pag, uh, alam ba, meron akong business, no? Sasabihin ko doon na uh, uh, architect uh, last year, dealer of uh, Avon products. No, that is allowed kasi ang, pinop ang pinopromote mo naman is uh, Avon products and not your uh, architectural uh, services. Eh, nagkataon lang doon, sinabi mo doon na uh, architect uh, last year, distributor of Avon products. No? Si title mo naman yon, So that is also considered as uh, indirect uh, advertisement which is allowed under our code kasi hindi naman ang practice of profession mo ang iyong uh, tinitinda ron, no? but uh, other products no, na, na pwede. Okay, eh, sir, paano yung mga streamers, no? Pumasa ako na na-welcome ako sa aming uh, bayan for example, no? Welcome architect ganito, ang laki ng streamer, no? Isang buong uh, road right of way. Uh, bawal ba 'yon? Hindi naman bawal, no? Pero ang ang problema natin doon is baka uh, self-laudation naman siya, no? Sobra-sobra naman yung uh, yung uh, pag-greet uh, natin sa ating uh, colleagues no kasi sinasabi nga natin pag tiningnan natin ang ating section 3.7 ng ating 2006 code of ethics ang ating advertisement no dapat in embodied manner sa pinakamababang paraan dapat no so kung nakalagay diyan na limbo nagkaroon ng streamer diyan sobrang laking laki no tapos isang taon na isang taon ka nang pumasa nandiyan pa rin sa gitna ng road right, road right of way no hindi para solicitations na yon no so yun mga pinagbabawal okay so yon ang uh, pinaka objective dito is it should be in a modest manner no I ito nga uh, sa isang nabasa kong case no nakalagay dito na a business card 3 inches by 4 inches o di ba lumabas doon sa standard ng size ng business card no 3 inches by 4 inches size indicating data and photo may picture pa 
sinabi doon sa nabasa kong uh, libro na unethical. The size of the card and the inclusion of the person's photo takes it away the ambit of immodest manner that are allowed by the code. No? It is a form of self-laudation, is undignified and considered as commercial lesson. So, di ba? Yun ang uh, nabasa ko sa isang uh, libro. No? Although, well, sa panahon ngayon, di ba, more on digital na tayo. No? So, usually maganda na yung ating mga advertisement, no? lalo na sa, sa Facebook. So, siguro, with that, kailangan dapat uh, i-revisit din ng ating uh, PR BOA, ang ating Code of Ethics, no? na mag- mag uh, ano dapat sa sa panahon ngayon no mag uh, align sa ngayong uh, uh, yung uh, digital age no so dapat uh, i-consider na nila yon okay and then uh, advertisement no uh, ownership of plans uh, I, i just want to tackle this uh, ownership of plans no kasi uh, tayo mga arkitekto uh, nilalagay natin sa ating uh, title block no ang uh, section 33 pero naiintindihan ba natin ang nakalagay sa section 33 ng ating uh, RA 9266 no sinasabi sa section 33 ng 9266 natin that uh, drawings and specifications and other contract documents duly signed and sealed as instrument of service are the intellectual property and documents of the architect whether the object to which they are made is executed or not. It shall be unlawful for any person to, to duplicate or to make cap copies of said documents for use in the repetition of and for other projects or buildings. Bakit ko hindi emphasize ito? No? Kasi marami sa atin nagbibigay ng presentation drawings sa kliyente na hindi signed and sealed. Okay? Tapos nagkiklaim tayo ng intellectual property. Take note ang sinasabi ng ating section 33. Okay? Drawings and specifications and other documents signed, duly signed and sealed. E paano pagka hindi duly signed and sealed? So, hindi ka makapag-claim ng iyong uh, copyright. No? Kasi malinaw sila sabi ng batas. My point is, pagka hindi yan signed and sealed, you cannot use Section 33. But you can uh, use RA 8293, the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. No? Kasi hindi siya signed and sealed. But if that drawing is signed and sealed, then you can use... Section uh, 33. And take note, kasi nasabi ng Section 33, hindi siya pwedeng i-duplicate, hindi siya pwedeng ipakopya for repetition no, in other uh, lot, for example, or in other uh, site, for example. You know, nung nakarang araw, uh, there is one architect consulted me kasi meron siyang nakita sa social media. No? Merong isang uh, nagbagawa yata ng uh, plano ng uh, bahay at hindi niya nagamit ang kanyang plano na pinagawa siya isang architect. At ang ginawa niya, nag-post sa social media, no? Sinabi niya doon na uh, hindi ko 'to nagamit yung plano ko, binibenta ko na lang sa murang paraan, no? That is not allowed, no? Because that owner does not vest ownership on that plans and specifications. The ownership, the intellectual creation still belongs to the architect as author of the said uh, plans. Ang binabayaran ng kliyente sa atin is the services rendered and not the uh, the physical plan itself. No? Binibigyan lang natin sila ng kopya and uh, for their file, no? but uh, that will be a basis for the construction no? na gagamitin. So, hindi pwedeng ibenta yan ng ibang uh, ng, ng mga owner pagka hindi natuloy ang uh, project without the written consent of the uh, architect. So, ginawa ko ng vlog sa aking uh, YouTube channel yon dahil sabi ko parang medyo critical issues din na anytime pwede nilang ibenta yung intellectual creation ng uh, mga architects. Okay? So, uh, yung picture na nakikita ninyo ay uh, ito yung picture na gawa ng isang architect yung sa left side and yung sa right side kinuha yata ng uh, contractor no, sa social media and uh, pinost no and pinalitan nila yung name ng architect pinalitan nila ng pang ng pangalan nila no so violation no without uh, the the written consent of the architect okay well as to this uh, advertisement hindi naman sinasabi natin na hindi tayo pwedeng mag-post sa social media no because that is one kind of our digital advertisement nowadays but you have to bear the consequences no pagka nag-post ka sa social media and uh, you make it public you have to bear the consequences kasi minayaan mo maging public eh. No? At anyone, pag nagustuhan yung design mo, can download it. 
no hindi mo naman na uh, alam kung uh, na na the download nila or hindi no lalo na pa halimbawa ang nag-download is sa Visayas no? sa Mindanao no in fact others is uh, nag-download na rin sa Pinterest no so if you want that your design will not be copied then make it privately no pero pag yung design mo ay uh, pinos mo sa social media and make it public you have to bear the consequences kasi mahirap i i uh, reason out no or or prove i prove as uh, evidence na uh, yung copyright mo no ano sinabi ng Supreme Court yan okay uh, before we discuss the the Supreme Court decision uh, ang sinasabi may isang case no Ulanyo versus Lim sinasabi dito na to constitute infringement of that uh, drawings or design by the architect the uh, usurper must have copied or appropriated the work kinopya no Isa, yun ang uh, isang decision ng Supreme Court. Kailangan kinopya. Pagka hindi niya kinopya, hindi niya na-usurp, walang copyright infringement. Okay? So, mas malinaw ang Section 33 natin kumpara doon sa Section 186 ng uh, RA 8293 with regards doon sa uh, copyright natin. So, uh, take note, you have to use always Section, 20, uh, Section 33 rather than to use Section 186 of the uh, intellectual uh, property code kasi mas malinaw ang ating uh, section 33. Okay. Uh, itong decision ng Supreme Court, uh, I want to discuss this kasi importante ito doon sa copyright uh, issue. no? Sa case ni uh, Ron Ronda Ave Vivares and the spouses Margarita and David uh, Zuzara versus uh, St. Teresa Scalins and Mylene uh, Risa Escudero and uh, Jan Dos, ito ay isang kaso na nangyari sa Cebu, no? na uh, yung mga estudyante nilang babae na kuha nung kanilang uh, professor yung uh, mga pictures nila na naka naka swimsuit no or naka bikini and then uh, sinasabi nila na it uh, it uh, affects the uh, the uh, moral of the institution ng ng eskwelahan no so uh, ito ang gusto ko lang i-emphasize ito is the decision of the Supreme Court No, on the copyright. Kasi nagkaroon ng uh, copyright issue yung uh, mga pictures ng mga estudyante. Ang sinabi ng Supreme Court dito is that it is thus incumbent upon uh, internet users to exercise due diligence in their online dealings and activities and must not be negligent in protecting their rights. Equity serves the vigilant, demanding relief from the courts as he requires that claimants themselves take utmost care in safeguarding a right which the alleged to have been violated, these are indispensable. We cannot afford protection to persons if they themselves did not or did nothing to place the matter within the confines of their private zone. Online social uh, media users must be mindful enough to learn the use of privacy tools, to use them if they decide to keep the information private, to keep track of changes in the uh, available uh, privacy settings, such as those of Facebook, especially because Facebook is notorious for changing these settings and the site's layout often. So, sinasabi ng court dito na kung ayaw mong uh, hindi magaya, kung ayaw mong hindi tingnan ang iyong mga pinopost no, para ma-download ng iba, makopya ng iba, make it private. If you are not using... Uh, the privacy tools no? na ginawa po siya private and that is public, sabi ng korte, wala kang karapatan mag-demand sa court na proteksyonan ka because you make your, your uh, postings public. Okay? So, yun ang sinasabi ng uh, korte. 2014 decision lang to ng ating Supreme Court. Okay? So, take note sa mga uh, ating uh, social media users. No? <clears throat> Now, let's go to the Code of Ethics. Malapit na tayo matapos. Okay? So, uh, i-emphasize ko lang yung uh, some portions of the Code of Ethics, no? Uh, yung uh, Section 7.7, 7.9 na discuss natin kanina, yung signing and sealing, no? And then we have uh, 7.4 and uh, 7.5. In 7.7, sinasabi lang that the architect shall refrain from associating himself or herself with or allowing the use of her, his name, by any enterprise that may negatively affect himself. Ito kasi, maraming mga architect na ginagawang Uh, 
STA na mga cor corporations no, and the construction firm. No? So, sinasabi ng ating uh, section 7.7 that the architect shall uh, refrain from associating himself or allowing the use of his name. No? And then, uh, section 7.5, the architect shall not undertake a commission. Magka meron ng ibang arkitekto, no? huwag ka nang pumasok pa. No? Bawal na bawal. And then, uh, an architect shall not uh, under any circumstances or, or through any means solicit project known na naibigay na si ibang arkitekto. Okay? And uh, the last one is, critical areas talaga to, yung the architect shall not maliciously or unfairly criticize or discredit another architect or the latter's work. So kung nakita mong pangit yung gawa ng isang uh, colleagues mo, pumunta sa iyo yung isang kliyente, huwag mo nang siraan pa sa isang kliyente kasi bawal. No? Tingnan mo yung mga doktor. No? Pagka hindi ay, pag ikaw ay hindi gumaling sa sakit mo at pumunta ka sa ibang doktor, magsisikan opinion ka. Sabihin na ng ibang doktor, ha, baka yung gamot na binigay niya siguro baka hindi ay, ano yung katawan mo. No? So, subukan natin yung ganitong gamot. Hindi nila sisiraan ng kanilang colleagues. So, dapat the same. That will happen to the practice of architecture profession. No? Uh, we should not uh, maliciously or unfairly criticize or discredit any another architects or the uh, architects uh, latter's uh, work. Okay? Sources of authority. Saan nang gagaling ang ating source of authority? It is on the Certificate of Registration and not on the PRC ID. Okay. Ito ngayon, gusto ko i-emphasize under uh, Section 7, Paragraph E of RA 8981, no? nakalagay dyan, to admit the successful examinees to the practice of the profession, isang duty ito ng uh, ating uh, PRC no? and the board, cause the entry of their names on its registry book and computerized database, issue a certificate of registration and professional license. Take note of the word, ha? issue certificate of registration slash professional license. Yan ang mababasa natin as one duty ng PRC and the board sa RA8981 or the PRC Modernization Act of 2000. Bearing the registrant's name, picture, and registration number signed by all the members of the board concerned and the chairperson with the official seal of the board and the commission affects there too. Which certificate shall be the authority to practice? Malinaw na sinasabi ng uh, batas sa PRC na ang ating authority to practice ay nanggagaling sa ating certificate of registration. Tingnan ninyo yung kadugtong. And at the option of the professional concerned ministerially issue the professional identification card to be used solely for purposes of identification upon payment of the appropriate amount. Ibig sabihin, hindi dapat mandatory ang professional identification card or PIC, uh, PRC ID. Ang pinaka dapat protektahan natin dito is the certificate of registration and not the PRC ID. Oh. Ma mahirap lang kasi dalhin ang uh, certificate of registration, no? The travel ka, every time dala mo yung naka-frame na certificate of registration. Kaya kumukuha tayo ng PRC ID. But under the law, ang PRC ID is not mandatory. It is only optional. No? So, malinaw yan. Okay? So, ang nakalagay sa PRC ID, pag makikita ninyo sa likod, certification, no? In that PRC ID, wala kang mababasa dyan na title na yan ay uh, professional license no di tulad sa LTO no so ang makikita mo diyan is professional identification card it is only in normal ID okay and sa likod niyan ang mababasa mo certificate uh, certification this is to certify that the person whose name photograph and signature appear herein is a duly registered professional Legally authorized to practice his or her profession with all the rights and privileges appurtenant thereto. This is to certify further that he or she is a professional in good standing and that his or her certificate of registration is not been revoked, suspended, or withdrawn. So, sinisertify lang ng ID na yan na hindi withdrawn, hindi suspended, hindi na-revoke ang iyong certificate of registration dahil yon pagka na-revoke, wala ka ng authority to practice i profession. So, sinabi rin niya ng isang prominent author ng taxation no, sa libro niya na Bar Q&A, no, 50 Years of the Bar ni Abelardo Domondon. Sinabi niya doon, this was also observed by one of the author na 
Sinasabi niya, furthermore, RA8981, the PRC Modernization Act of 2000 does not require renewal of the professional license or registration. Okay? So, yon. Ito naman ang sinabi ngayon ni Robert Sack, no, ni Chairman. And ito, the ID is a representation of your license to practice. ID is not your license. ID is simply identification card representing your license. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.